This is the third in a series of videos around making a circuit board using a CNC mill and a few other techniques. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, there are links below in the description. In those videos, I covered the purpose of the board, I shared the design in Fusion 360, laid out the gear that I'm using including the drills and cutting tools, and shared the first two operations performed on the board. If you are following along with this series and are enjoying it, please like, subscribe, comment, or forward to your friends. I should note, CNC milling in general is dangerous. Please remember that if you choose to follow along with this video, you do so at your own risk. In this video, I'll be sharing one of the longest operations on the board, the clearing of the bulk of the copper on the top of the board and also the cutout of the board from the stock. Because this video will be longer than most, let me cue that up right away. I could have chosen to remove just a trace along the edge of the circuits, but I felt it would be simpler to remove it all because then I don't need to worry about using a solder mask or any other similar mechanism to make sure I don't accidentally solder in a way that would cause a short on this board. I'm using my 1.5 millimeter titanium coated tungsten carbide engraving bit for both of these operations, and here are my feeds and speeds. This mill is often referred to as a burr. One of the advantages of using a tool like this is that it's capable of both conventional and climb milling. If you're not familiar with what that means, there's a link in the description below. When you can do both, the operation's overall time can be significantly less. Unfortunately, I forgot to structure my toolpath to take advantage of that here, thus the overall time it took to perform these operations was close to an hour and 15 minutes. According to Fusion 360, I would have probably reduced that to about 40 minutes if I had taken advantage of both. Another advantage of using this tool is that if set at good feeds and speeds, it should leave a pretty good finish. I've cut this board a few times now, and with my conservative numbers in this run, I got the best results compared to a faster feed and speed in subsequent runs. I have not tested even more conservative numbers as a little emery paper cleans up the surface quite easily and an even slower operation was not desirable. The clearing operation is using a 2D adaptive strategy and the cutout is using a more traditional contour cut at multiple depths. Adaptive strategies employ techniques that arc the tool into the material in a way that minimizes the likelihood of breaking the cutting tool. They also provide a more consistent chip load and simultaneously provide a faster milling technique. There are great articles and videos all over the internet on this subject if you want to take a deeper dive. Fusion 360 has both 2D and 3D adaptive capabilities, and I highly recommend using them if you are CNC milling. The 
And there you have it. Our board is starting to look like a real circuit. In my next and last video in this series, I'll flip the board and perform the final operations on it. Stay tuned. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell, or leave me a comment below. And as always, happy making.